Maybe you're like me and you're ready to go to the next level in your shepherd slinging. If that's the case, do stick around, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for taking time just to click on this video. My goal is to do two things. Number one, I want to create one of the most helpful videos on shepherd slinging you've ever seen. Number two, I want to give a shout out to a well-deserved slinger here on YouTube that I've been gleaning from for quite some time. His channel is called Practical Paracord, and he sells a sling on his website that is simply amazing. It's called the Smiling Sling. So if you like shepherd slinging and you're not subscribed to Practical Paracord, go out and give that man a sub. I think you'll love his personality. He's friendly. He's always putting out great slinging content. Let's get rolling. So let's just get right down to the brass tacks on something. One of the greatest enemies to growing as a shepherd slinger is not having anywhere to practice or anything to practice with. It's easy to get a shepherd sling, but it's not always so easy to figure out what your practice setup is gonna be. I've made some connections with guys who have some really good setups. They've got these backyards where they've got this backdrop that they can throw these tennis balls at. They're able to collect their ammo and throw again. That's a really ideal way to practice if you've got that kind of setup. If you've got the ability to, to set up some sort of a backdrop where you can catch your ammo, maybe throw racket balls or tennis balls at it, that's amazing. As for me, I'm just a wild man out here in the country. I don't have no fancy setup. Besides, I like throwing rocks anyway. I want to be able to throw just like David did in the Bible when he took down Goliath. I want to have that kind of skill because I tell you what, these rocks flying through the air at the speed that a shepherd sling can send them will drop a giant in a heartbeat. It'll drop just about anything that it hits. You know, back in the day, they would just send these stones into the crowd, you know, back in ancient times. The shepherd sling has been used very heavily over time. I don't know about you, but I do everything that I do to become a little more dangerous. When I look at all the stuff I do across the board from firearms to archery, a slingshot to knives to this, I think about weaponry first before I think about recreation. To each is his own. I think about weaponry first before I do anything else. And that's the great thing about marksmanship is it can be you know, weaponry skills, you can become more dangerous, but you can also have a lot of fun and you can also prepare for survival. So I want all the rocks I can get my hands on and I'm gonna tell you how I did it. So friend, let me save you a lot of trouble when collecting ammo. Just go to a local garden center and pay five to seven bucks and get you a bucket full of ammo. It's so much easier than trying to gather all these good rocks. Now in this video, I'm trying to learn how to throw overhead. I typically just do helicopter but I've had too many inconsistencies with that and I'm ready to try something new. I don't give the best sling tutorials, but I'll give it my best shot. With this particular sling, I have two finger holes. So I'm just gonna put my fingers through the finger holes here. If you've just got one finger hole, then just choose either your, your index or your middle finger. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the object inside of the sling. Your stone or your tennis ball is gonna go right here and you're just gonna extend it and you're gonna pinch this knot and then from here, you're gonna to go to whatever spin method you go with. Some people go with helicopter. They try to figure out when to let it go. Some people may go with a figure eight. Some people might go through that. Some people, you know, will get their sling and they'll they'll go underhanded like this and they'll, they'll let it go. I mean, for me, I've only done helicopter. But in this video, I'm gonna do a method that's kind of like this. I'm gonna kind of be out to the side and I'm going to try to, at the right time, bring it up and throw it overhead. And when you're ready to throw it, throw the knot. I know I had some success and I did experience more consistency throwing it in the same direction, but it's still hard getting into the flow for some reason because I used to try to time it on the helicopter throw this way. I didn't throw it overhead. I helicoptered it sideways. Well, now I'm kind of, kind of doing like a sideways helicopter, but I'm trying to transition into throwing 
overhead like a baseball and it's sometimes easy to get out of that groove. I'm not aiming at anything, but I'm gonna try to slow it down so you can see what I'm doing. Coming here, coming over top, throwing, just like that right there. Something that was said to me in the comments on one of my other slinging videos really gave some clarity and they said, you need to slow down because I was slinging so fast. I did start to slow it down a little bit so that I could feel the throw more. I'll try to hit this tree lightly in front of me. I'm just pulling it like this and I'm feeling it coming out of my hand. Just like that right there. You're able to control it a lot more if you do slow it down. And that was a great tip for whoever dropped that in the comments. That's not to say you can't speed it up a little bit. You just don't want to go so fast that you don't feel the throw properly. It's also easy to throw too high or too low. You have to kind of use your senses for this and engage the target. If you're throwing low, you might need to kind of crouch down and zoom in on your target. And it is a later release. Now, I'm not the expert here. I'm just trying to tell you some of the things that were starting to work for me. Throwing higher meant a little earlier release. I don't know about you, but I find slinging to be some of the most challenging marksmanship that I've ever worked with. And every time I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit good at it, I don't know, there's just more challenging elements that pop up. But I'm just bound and determined to get surgical with it. And here's the deal. I welcome any comments and expertise that come my way on this video. I'm decent, but I got a long ways to go. And I know that some of you watching this are probably just watching it because it's shepherd sling content, but man, I need some help. A little while ago, I started experimenting with underhand and I actually hit a very small target, but I haven't been able to repeat that process, but I'm working on that as well. I'm just working on different styles. I'm just trying to get really accurate with this because I really, really, really want to be good as a shepherd slinger. I do hope that I was able to make some sort of contribution to your skill set just by watching maybe some of the things that I did or some of my strategies or approaches, and I hope that I was a help. But I've got a lot of work to do myself, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to a conclusion. I'd love to hear any tips, any tricks, any wisdom you may have in the area of shepherd slinging, and I do want to encourage you to go check out Practical Paracord. If you like slinging, you're going to love that channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.